I'm Sarah, and today on Budget Sew, I'm going to show you how I made two hats and a pair of mittens from a sweatshirt. Now, this sweatshirt was going to be tossed in the garbage because it had a large orange stain on it. It rather looked like I was shot in the chest with a paintball, but I've never been paintballing. This is a before shot of the sweatshirt. different hat patterns for this video. The first one is McCall's 7805. It's one of their fashion accessory patterns that was published in 1995. I purchased this pattern for $1.99 at Value Village. The second pattern that I used for the hat and mitts is Simplicity 9749. It was also published in 1995 and I also purchased it at Value Village. I'll post the link in the description box of this video for for the video where I did the thrift haul where I purchased these patterns. Now I did make some modifications to these patterns because I wanted slouchy hats, somewhat like Simplicity 8812 or Simplicity 8036. I also didn't have quite enough fabric for a pair of mittens, but I made it work. I wanted to get as much use as possible out of the sweatshirt. Since I was modifying the patterns and had never made them up before, this was really a trial and error process. So let's get started with the Simplicity hat. With Simplicity 9749 View D, I used one pattern piece, piece 7 for the crown. In order for the hat to be slouchier, I redrew the crown piece larger and longer, keeping the bottom of the crown piece the same size as before, so that when the crown was sewn together, it would be the same circumference around. When cutting out the pattern, I had to even up the sides of my hat so it wouldn't be lopsided, so I folded the template in half and trimmed it up. I played around a lot with the pattern pieces for both McCall 7805 and Simplicity 9749 to make them fit on the sweatshirt and get the maximum use out of the fabric. The Simplicity pattern indicated that the crown piece should be cut out six times. I'm using my fabric scissors that I purchased off Amazon.ca for $15.99 Canadian. I'll post the link to my video of the review as well as the link for the scissors in the description box of this video. With Simplicity 9749, I pinned three of the crown pieces together, right sides facing in, and set them aside to be sewn together. Then I pinned the next three crown pieces together. Then I stitched where I had pinned. After taking the pins out, I had two main crown pieces. Next, I clipped the curves to reduce the bulk in the seam allowances and reduce the weight of the fabric. After that, I top stitched down the seam allowances an eighth of an inch from the side seams on both sides of the seam for all six pieces. This gave the hat a nice shape.
Next, I pinned one half of the crown to the other half of the crown, right sides facing in, and stitched them together. After that, I clipped the new curve that was created and top stitched down the seam allowances an eighth of an inch from the side seams on both sides. My final step was to hem the hat. I folded up the raw edge about an inch and stitched it down. Here's my slouchy version of Simplicity 9749, View D. I hope you like the Simplicity hat. Now let's do it again with the McCall's one. With McCall's 7805 View C, I didn't make much of an adjustment with the actual pattern pieces, except I cut out both the band and the cuff together as one piece. I placed the cuff on the ribbing at the bottom of the sweatshirt, which is two layers, so I didn't have to place this piece on a fold. Here's where I made a mistake. I only placed one of the bands on the ribbing and then cut it out, but I didn't notice this until I went to sew it. So I had to go back and fix this to make the ribbing continuous. Next, I cut out the crown piece. Then I applied the fusible interfacing to the crown of the hat so that it kept its shape. And yes, I had to reread the instructions so I didn't ruin my iron. I'm sure everyone has done that at least once. Next, I sewed the two sides of the band and cuff pieces together, making sure that the right sides of the fabric were facing each other so that the seam allowances would be on the inside of the hat. Next, I sewed the circular crown piece to the band piece, matching up the notches to ensure that it fit correctly. After sewing the hat into one piece, I clipped the curve of the crown with my fabric scissors to get rid of the extra bulk in the seam allowance so that the hat draped better. Here's my slouchy version of McCall 7805 View C. Two hats down and a pair of mitts to go. My third and final project to make out of the sweatshirt was a pair of mittens to go with my hats. I chose Simplicity 9749 for the mittens. For this pattern, I needed to cut out four fingertip pieces and four palm pieces. Now, I was really short on fabric and I was not using any of the orange paint stain part, so I decided to make the thumb of the mittens a separate piece. I didn't see this as a big deal because the fingertips of the mittens were also a separate piece. So I traced the thumb part of the pattern onto some paper and added a small seam allowance to where it would join the mitten. This piece would also need to be cut out four times. I made sure to cut out all the mitten pieces and I marked all the notches in the pattern to help with lining it up when sewing.
My next step was to pin the fingertips and thumbs to the mittens. I made sure that the right sides of the fabric were together and that the fingertip and thumb pieces were all facing the right way. I didn't want an upside down thumb. Next, I stitched the fingertips and thumbs to the palm section of the mitten. Uh oh, my thread broke. After that, I top stitched both sides of where the fingertips join the palm about an eighth of an inch away from the seam. I forgot to do this with the thumb pieces and I think that this would have made the mittens look better. My sewing machine did not like this fabric because the thread broke repeatedly as you can see. I replaced the needle and played with the thread tension to make it work. Next I took two of the mitten halves and pinned them together with the right sides of the fabric facing in. I repeated this on the other side as well. Next I stitched them together. My final step before turning the mittens the right way out was to clip the curves around the thumbs and the fingertips to reduce the bulkiness. Here's the final results. I hope you enjoyed watching how I made two hats and a pair of mitts out of an old sweatshirt. In the comment section, let me know what you've made out of an old piece of clothing that was going to be tossed in the garbage. And if you would like to see more from Budget Sew, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.